Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. We're glad to have you with us. Today's organist is Joseph Peoples, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Many Christian communities around the world are currently celebrating Eastertide, the weeks following Easter Sunday, when the joy of the resurrection continues to give hope to the faithful. In that vein, Joseph begins today's program with the fantasy on Easter hymn, better known as Christ the Lord is Risen Today. This organ fantasy was written by Sir William Henry Harris, who, among other professional responsibilities, was former music teacher to the future Queen Elizabeth II at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. His fantasy on Easter hymn was published in 1956. Many listeners are familiar with the hymn tune, Bunnison, though they may not know it by that name. Most recognize it as the song, Morning Has Broken, whose lyrics were first published in 1931. But the tune is much older than that, and probably Irish in origin. It had already been used as a hymn tune long before Eleanor Fargen wrote the words to Morning Has Broken. It's a bit sobering to think that Cat Stevens' 1971 recording of Morning Has Broken is closer in time to Eleanor Fargen's 1931 publication than it is to us today. This lovely tune was also the setting for Albert Bailey's 1970 hymn text, Praise and Thanksgiving, and that's the title Dale Wood gave to his organ arrangement of the Bunnison tune, which we'll hear next. Thank you. 
the traditional portion of today's program includes two arrangements by our organist, Joseph Peoples. First is the well-loved Latter-day Saint hymn, Come, Come, Ye Saints. And then Joseph plays his arrangement of Siogan, the haunting lullaby from Wales that has been popularized in numerous film soundtracks and also appears in some recent hymnals as a hymn tune.
Continuing the theme of Eastertide, I'd like to look at the final movement, labeled accurately but prosaically Finale, of Louis Vienne's Organ Symphony No. 5, and regard it as kind of a symbol of Easter. Now, Vienne didn't intend this association. It would be an indefensible stretch to claim that Vienne's Symphony No. 5 is an Easter symphony. But there is truth in it, and that truth can apply to experiences and feelings outside of the music itself. We are drawn to great music, not merely because we recognize pretty or clever patterns in it, but because it moves us and kindles responses that can, if we allow them, teach us truth about ourselves, about each other, about the human condition. Thanks to Beethoven, fifth symphonies have a special place in a composer's output. Beethoven's fifth is sometimes called his fate symphony. The opening motif is fate knocking at the door and by the finale of that work, the composer celebrates a victory over fate. Again, that's not Beethoven's interpretation. That was his secretary, Anton Schindler, who attributed it to Beethoven, but more likely made up the dramatic symbolism himself. Vienne's Fifth Symphony also ends in triumph. The first four movements are filled with anguish and uncertainty. Like Beethoven, Vianne's own life was full of drama, conflict, and, dare we say it, the challenges of a difficult fate. And the final movement of Vianne's symphony, like Beethoven's, brings back the despairing theme of the opening movement, but transforms it into something much more hopeful. Vianne also writes this final movement in the parallel major mode. The symphony begins in A minor and ends in A major. It's not terribly surprising then that a contemporary critic described this final movement, a brilliant toccata, as a victory of joy over pain. Dear Vianne, he wrote, the inspiration shone poignantly from your troubled soul. Eastertide celebrates a victory as well, a victory of life over death, of joy over hopelessness, of redemption from sin. It's victory on a grand, universal, infinite scale. Our personal victories, including Louis Vienne's, can't even begin to match the power of Christ's atonement and resurrection. But within our own lives, these smaller victories also give us reason to celebrate. It's the same impulse. We recognize our own joy in the joy we feel at Easter. Now, the finale movement from Louis Vienne's Organ Symphony No. 5.
We're so glad you joined us for this episode of Piping Up featuring organist Joseph Peoples. Thank you for watching. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org. <laughs>